Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another PS4 jailbreak tutorial. So in this one, I'm going to be showing you how you can jailbreak your PS4 on 11.0 using a Luckfox Pico device. And these are cheaper alternatives to using a Raspberry Pi. If you cannot get a Raspberry Pi in your country or they're too expensive, then the Luckfox Pico is a good cheap alternative. So we're going to be looking at how we can get it fully set up on this device. So the Luckfox Pico, there's a few different variants that you can pick up. I would highly recommend getting one that already has the Ethernet port on it. It is a little bit more expensive. Uh, there is the Max variant, the Pro and the Plus variant. The Plus variant is the cheapest one that I've seen that has the Ethernet port already on there. You can pick it up for about $10 to $12. Now you can also use the ones that don't have an Ethernet port, but you'll have to actually attach an Ethernet port to them, uh, which may involve soldering. And it's also more complicated to actually, you know, set up and install it. So would highly recommend picking up one of the versions that actually has the Ethernet port, so the Max, the Pro, or the Plus. That is one of the ones that I would recommend getting. Now, you'll also need a micro SD card of at least 8 gigabytes in size, according to the project on GitHub. And you'll also need a USB-C to USB Type-A cable and an Ethernet cable and some way to connect your SD card up to the computer, like a SD card reader. And you'll also need a USB drive if this is your first time loading the 11.0 jailbreak. If you don't have any of those additional requirements, there is an all-in-one kit you can buy for around $27 on AliExpress, although I haven't actually tested that kit out myself yet, so I can't really recommend it at this point. Okay, so if we take a look at the project on GitHub, which will be linked down in the description, if we scroll down to the point where we have Download Ubuntu OS, so we're going to select that option, that'll take us over to this Google Drive link. We're going to select the Ubuntu image here, double-click on it, and then we have the different versions for the different types of Luckfox devices. So mine is a Luckfox Pico Plus. So this is the one I'm going to download. Download the corresponding zip file for your Luckfox device. So if we just double click this, and then from there we can hit the download button up here or the download button here to download it to your computer. Now you'll also want to download the SOC toolkit, which is also linked here in the GitHub repo. So you can just download it right here. So once you have those downloaded to your computer and you have the SD card connected, we're going to open up the SOC toolkit. So we're just going to double click on this or right click and run it as administrator. That would probably be best. So for the chip selection, it's going to be RV1103. If you have the Pico, the Plus or the Mini. However, if you have a Pro or a Max, then it will be RV1106. So in my case, it's going to be a 1103 because I have the plus i believe yeah i have the plus so that is the one i'm going to select there then we're going to head over to the sd tool we're going to select sd boot and select your sd card if it doesn't show up in here you'll need to unplug your sd card reader and plug it back into the computer while you're running the software and then it should show up in here if it still doesn't show up make sure it's formatted in either xfat or fat32 format and then it should be detectable so then we're going to want to select our boot files and this is the Pico plus Ubuntu SD card image we downloaded. So we're going to select the boot files from there. So Luckfox Pico plus Ubuntu underscore SD cards, the extracted zip file. So we're going to select all of the files here apart from the update.img because it will not build the SD card image if that is included. So we're going to deselect that but select all of the other images that are in here and click open. And then we're just going to create the SD card by clicking Create SD. And that is it. You just wait for all of this to get written to the SD card, all of the different partitions. Okay, so once it says Create SD Card OK, you can then close out of the software and eject your SD card from your computer. Okay, so now we need to get the Luckfox device prepared. So we're going to plug in our SD card to the SD card slot on the top of the Luckfox device. can be a little finicky to get that connected. But once you have that plugged in, we then want to power the device using the USB-C cable. At the moment, you can just plug it into anything, your computer, for example, just to power it for the meantime. And then we also want to plug in the Ethernet cable between the Luckfox device and your router. You want to plug it directly into your router at the moment because we still need to get everything configured on the device first of all. Okay, so once we have everything hooked up, we can open up Putty, which I'll leave linked down in the video description. And then we're also going to enter our host name. We're going to connect on SSH using the host name luckfox.lan. 
and you're going to have to potentially wait a long time for this to connect to the network. So give it at least five or 10 minutes, I would say. In some cases, it's actually taken that long for it to actually connect to the network. Uh, for some reason, this device is extremely slow. At least the Plus version is very slow. I don't know about the other variants, but the version I have is very slow. So it actually takes a long time for it to get connected to the network. So if you just plug it in and you immediately try to connect to luckbox.lan, it will probably tell you that you know it cannot connect. So at least give it five or 10 minutes and then try and connect and you should be good. Uh, if you still can't find it on the network, if it's still refusing the connection, then go on your router, log into your router and try and find it in there and find the actual local IP address of the device on your router so that you can connect to it that way. Otherwise, you should be able to use the, the host name luckfox.lan and you should be able to connect. So SSH port 22, we're going to open. Okay, and then we'll get our login. So we're going to log in as Pico. And then the password is going to be luckfox. Okay, so once we're logged in, if we clear the screen and we head back to the GitHub repo, if we scroll down, we have the commands that we want to enter here. You can just copy all of them and then you can right click to paste them in here and then press enter and it will run through each command one by one. Now, this is one way that you can install it. I will also show you a manual method as well, because one of the other issues that I have with this is that it takes a really long time to do the sudo apt update command as well. Sometimes it can be like half an hour, an hour just to do a sudo apt update. Maybe there's something wrong with my device. I'm not sure if that's normal. However, that is an issue I run into. And then sometimes it actually fails to do the sudo update command. It just gets stuck at a particular point. So because of that, I'm going to use the manual method. So you can try this method first, press enter, let it do the apt update, let it try and do all of the other commands. If it works fine for you, then it should all be set up and ready to go. But if that doesn't work, if you run into any problems running these commands, I'll show you how to do things manually as well here. Okay, so the manual method involves just downloading this on your computer. So go to the code here and download it as a zip file and then extract that out to your desktop. I have it right here. And then I believe it also is called uh, luckfox-main. So it'll be called dash main. So just get rid of the dash main at the end. So it's just called uh, pppwn dash luckfox. And then from there, we're going to open winscp and just copy the files over manually. Okay, so once you open winscp, you want to click on new tab or just either that or it'll just open this window by default when you launch it. And we want to select a new site. The file protocol is going to be scp. And then the host name is going to be our luckfox.lan or the local IP address of the device on your network. Port 22, username is going to be Pico. Uh, we're not going to enter a password. We're going to save that uh, just as Pico at luckfox.lan and then log in. And then it will ask for the password, which is luckfox. And we can press enter. And then once we're logged in, we can just take the project from the GitHub, take that folder and drag it in. And that will copy everything inside. And that is it. You basically have everything installed. So we can close out of this now. So if we head back to the project on GitHub, scroll down to the bottom to where we have our commands, you're still going to want to enter most of these commands, just not the first three. So ignore the first three commands, copy everything else. And then from there, we can go back into Putty here, paste these commands in and press enter. And then enter the password, which is going to be luckfox. And now we just wait for this to initialize. And that should be it. Once we get kicked off, that means the reboot has started and it's now ready. So when it reboots, it will try and run the jailbreak now every single time. So now all you have to do is get it connected up to your PS4. So unplug the Ethernet cable from the router and plug it into the PS4. And of course, you can plug in the USB cable into one of the USB ports on the PS4 so that whenever you turn on the PS4, it will turn on the device and it will start running the jailbreak. And of course, if you've not jailbroken the PS4 before, then for the first time loading the jailbreak, you will need to take a USB drive, connect it up to your computer, make sure it's formatted in XFAT or FAT32 format here, and then go into that USB drive, go into the project folder and go to the USB drive folder and take the goldhen.bin file and copy that to the root of your USB drive. And then you just want to plug in this USB drive into your PS4 so that when it first runs the jailbreak, it will load the payload from the USB. On the PS4, we need to set up our network settings by heading into settings, going to network, set up an internet connection, use a LAN cable, and then select custom. 
and PPPoE, enter a random ID and password and click next and then automatic, automatic, do not use proxy. And there we go, we are all set. So at this point, all we need to do is wait for it to run the jailbreak. If we head into settings, I like to go into uh, system and system information. Okay, and as you can see, it's now trying to actually run the exploit. You can see the IP is set to 42, 42, 42, 42. So that means it is actually currently trying to run the exploit right now. And then if it fails, it will go back to being a blank IP address so that I know it's a failed attempt and it's going to then retry. So yeah, just looking at system information, you can kind of get an idea of what's going on uh, with the jailbreak. So now we're just waiting. So the USB drive that we have plugged in is for loading Gold Hen for the first time, the main jailbreak payload. Once that's been loaded for the first time, you don't need the USB drive in future attempts. So that looks like a failed attempt there. So there we go, it's now trying again. So that's one failed attempt that we've had so far. So the USB drive will no longer be required once we successfully load Gold Hen because it will be copied to the internal hard drive so any other times that we want to run the jailbreak in future, once we've loaded it successfully at least once from the USB, it will then no longer need the USB. So there we go. That has been successful. So I think that was the third or fourth attempt it took there. And the attempts are pretty fast. It looks like about 30 seconds or so, maybe less, 20, 25 seconds. So really not much longer than a Raspberry Pi, pretty much the same as a Raspberry Pi in terms of the, uh, the speed of the attempts. And this is the you know, not even the, the best version of the Luxfox device. This is the plus ver version, not the Max or the Pro. And uh, yeah, there we go. We have successfully loaded the jailbreak. So if we head back here, you can see we have Gold Hen running and we are now jailbroken. And of course, we can now unplug that USB drive. And the next time you want to run the jailbreak, uh, it will load it from the internal hard drive instead. So that USB drive is no longer required. So yeah, that is how you successfully jailbreak the PS4 on 11.0 using a Luckfox Pico device, a cheaper alternative to a Raspberry Pi. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.